Today on Crossing South, we go south of Mexicali and take a scenic boat ride. We kayak, we visit a remote village, and of course, we get to eat. Coming to you right now on Crossing South. After spending a few days in Mexicali, we drove south to San Felipe and stopped at a camp where we saw for the first time the Hardy River. Okay, so 40 kilometers south of Mexicali on the road to San Felipe, there's a campo called uh, the Cucapá Camp. You can see that's the highway. That's the highway, 40 kilometers south of Mexicali. That's the way to San Felipe, that's south, and that would be north. There's this campo called uh, the Baja Cucapá, uh, and it has uh, some interesting uh, tours, and we're going to take one right now. Um, we're going to take our boat ride on the Hardy River, so uh, stay with us. Let's, let's go check it out. The camp has some nice cabanas that you can rent for about 100 bucks and stay the night. We didn't. We wanted to keep moving south and enjoy the river. So this body of water, friends, all this water you see here comes from the Colorado River and it makes it the Hardy River right here, and it will end up at the Sea of Cortez, in Baja's armpit, if you will. So uh, let's go to that boat ride, right now. In order to go on an actual boat ride, we needed to take a short drive down the road to a boat launch. There, our local guide, Mr. Mario, already had his craft fueled up and revved up to go. You know, I'm not the most aquatic person in the world, but uh, we're gonna get to do some water activities today. So uh, let's first uh, run this unstable barge and now let's go on this boat. So <laughs> follow us along, folks. This is the Hardy River ride. This turned out to be a silky smooth ride. The glassy surface was very enjoyable. Those mountains are in the middle of Baja, separate the uh, Pacific side from the Sea of Cortez side. In fact, that strand of mountains starts at Cabo. It goes all the way through California, Oregon, and Washington, all the way to Canada. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I didn't know River Hardy was so popular. Look at all these homes along the banks of it. And I'm being told by my guide, most of these uh, are occupied by Americans who have made this a summer vacation home, a second home, third, fourth, whatever. It is a Chinese delicacy from what I hear. Chinese love that bird. However, it's in the endangered list, so it's illegal to hunt it here in, in the Baja. So we'll just have to enjoy its beauty and not its taste. One of the uh, many uh, wildlife that exist here in the Hardy River. In fact, uh, bird watching enthusiasts love the Hardy River because it has so much diversity in bird life. So let's, let's continue exploring this place. The 16 mile Hardy River is the end result of the Colorado River, which begins in the Rocky Mountains. Okay, so the further forward, I push the throttle, it's going to go faster. Roads, where we're going, we don't need roads. This is my first time driving a boat, folks. It was very cool. At the speed we were going, I could feel how easily you can flip one of these things if you jerk the wheel the wrong way. Of course I didn't. I wasn't gonna find out. In fact, I think I took a page out of driving Miss Daisy in my approach to maneuvers and navigation. There's an abundance of wildlife in the Hardy River, especially bird life, like the snowy egret or the great blue heron. And it's all part of a biosphere reserve overseen by a government agency. Some of the goals in the region, as is true with the pheasants, are believed to have been introduced by Chinese immigrants 
who eventually settled in Mexicali. I kind of parallel parked. <laughs> Get away. Once finished, we continued our single-minded focus south toward San Felipe. That is, until my ADD distracted me five minutes into the drive. We found another camp called Mosqueda, where we would engage in other aquatic activities. Okay, so during our boat ride, we saw this place and we were uh, uh, riding here on, on this lake and we saw this camp. It seems to be a really fun place. Tell me about it. Well, the Camp of Mosqueda started since uh, 1960. 60? Yeah, wow. that's the one. My okay. father started for the big dust, those place. And I that understand a lot of Americans live here in this camp, Yes, right? yeah, we have that. a lot of people camp for the, uh, more than the California. California, yeah. okay. The first people that came was uh, 1960, when that camp started. Oh, really? The people that came to the camp of Mosquera. And were they Americans or Mexicans? Only Americans. Only Americans, Americans. Yeah, Americans. 1960? Yeah, 1960, oh, wow. yeah. Vehicles? You can buggies and cycle and kayaks and jet ski, <laughs> whatever you want. That's only, it's party, that's it. Yeah. Okay, so uh, are you gonna allow us to do some kayaking here? Yeah, here? you can use okay. the kayak. Thank yeah, you very you, much, Mr. Mosquera. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Come yeah. follow us along, yeah. folks. <laughs> more of a land lover, but uh, <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Man. The owner of the camp was kind enough to lend us his kayaks and allow us to enjoy an early day workout. It was a tranquil ride, a chance to reflect and enjoy nature. We were having a very good day. I was able to get in some much needed exercise and breathe nature. You know, rowing is hard work. <laughs> I mean, You'll work your biceps, I'll tell you that much. I'm also turning red, <laughs> roasting, slowly roasting. This is the white part, this is the red part. <laughs> Rotisserie George, Rotisserie Jorge. You can't use your paddle in here. So you have to guide yourself by pulling yourself from the branches. <laughs> yes! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> but alas, it was time to go. Okay, now for real, we will make it to San Felipe. You know, folks, the official beach of the city of Mexicali is right here. Now, you're probably saying, wait a second, Mexicali is landlocked, isn't it? Well, yeah, but part of its municipality is this city. This city is San Felipe, and it's a two-hour drive but it's actually part of the same municipality, part of the same city. So, San Felipe, folks, we're gonna explore it right now. So, what's your name, my friend? My name is Philly. Philly? Yeah. Philly, uh, what do you do here in San Felipe, Philly? Just catching the people go fishing. Oh. The banana boat ride, you know. Banana boat ride, fishing. What kind of fish are there here in the, the Sea of Cortez? Calico, I see bags, you know. So it's just pretty good fishing here, you know. Very good fishing? Yeah. And, so, and how long have you been here in San Felipe? 10 years. 10 years? Yes, I did. Have you liked it? 
Yes, this is a good shop and they're working here, you know. Very tranquil way of life, isn't it? Yes. These guys hit the Sea of Cortez every day. So what, what is this? What kind of fish is this? It's a, a yellow croaker. Yellow croaker? Yellow croaker. And what, where, I mean, who consumes this fish? Korea. Korea? China. Korea and China? Yeah. Okay. $35 a kilo. Really? So you yeah. export this fish? Export direct to Korea. Well, after hearing some fishing stories from our new friends, and after them gauging my interest, they said they didn't want me to take their word for it. Okay, this is one of the things that actually will save my life. So the fishermen have agreed to take us on a quick uh, flash uh, fishing trip. Doña Charlie, Mrs. Charlie. Okay, there's no going back. Oh my goodness. Oh. Wasn't the, wasn't the uh, anniversary of the Titanic recently? <laughs> Okay, I, I don't know if this rope here is standard issued safety equipment, but I'm I'm ready. I'm ready. I don't wanna I don't wanna I don't wanna die at sea. I'm a land lover! Land lover! <laughs> well you heard this uh, how much a trip like this costs? 35 bucks a piece. It's not bad. You know, I was kinda nervous about it, but it's not bad. It's pretty stable. So that's the uh, San Felipe Bay. A lot of compost, a lot of places where you can uh, camp out, RV parking, some aquatic activities obviously available here. There you got the Punta Machorro Mountains. That's the, I that's the San Felipe icon. If you could do a logo for San Felipe, that was it. After navigating the open sea, we went into the harbor, which is right now only used by fishermen. Okay, so that is the Tony Reyes fishing boat. It is a legendary fisherman in San Felipe. Just passed away a couple of years ago, uh, but his son is continuing the torch. And if you want to do real fishing in San Felipe, you look up Tony Reyes, and, and, and that's the boat to do it on. So uh, fishing enthusiasts, behold. These boats are the lifeline of the fishing industry of this town. Their fishing exports are a very important part of their city's economy. I have to say, folks, this is as crusty as they get. This could be in a Hollywood film. Hey, casting uh, location managers, check this out. Don't need to build a prop. Look at this thing. These are not, these are not museum relics. These go out to sea today. These are seaworthy vessels, albeit a little bit on the rusty side, but they're seaworthy vessels. How you doing there, Mike? <laughs> you see my friend Nemo? <laughs> well, I mean, I think that owl there is meant to scare him away, but as you can see, uh, <laughs> It has no effect whatsoever. We've been seeing a lot of natural life on this trip. Follow them! I really enjoyed feeling the breeze and the wind on this Ponga ride. Beach it. Ramming speed. He's going ballistic. <laughs> Bet you haven't seen that one before. <laughs> Both American and Mexican families frolic in San Felipe's beaches. The kids enjoy it too. San Felipe has an approximate population of 16,000 people and an estimated 8,000 foreigners in their majority Americans who flee bitter winters and are thus nicknamed by the locals as snowbirds.
San Felipe was founded in 1916 with its still functioning lighthouse that guides fishermen on foggy days. This town has always had a slow pace of life. There are no stoplights here, and the sandy beaches just go on and on for miles south. We wanted to know just how far south we could go in one day and come back. And on a very nice road, we hit the small town of Partositos. Folks, we are 70 kilometers south of San Felipe. This is the town of Partositos. It is really sleepy to the superlative level. Uh, th there's, there's no people here if you like being secluded where there's you know, almost no people around. This is the place to be for that. And part of what this place has are its famous uh, hot springs. Because uh, Mexicali and uh, San Felipe are part of the Ring of Fire, uh, the Earth's Ring of Fire, well, there's volcanic activity underneath. The seawater and uh, the rock, when the tide recedes, leaves hot bathtubs. So some of those you can get in, some of those are too hot, but we'll go check them out. So, so these are the medicinal sulfur hot springs of Perdicitos. Man, they look nice, don't they? If I'd only brought some swimming trunks, man. You know, the sulfur smell is really, really strong. Oh boy, but the water is so warm. It's literally like it was, it was heated artificially. It's nice, it's warm. This is like your own spa. And you just feel the heat coming in. Recommended experience here in Partacitos. Ah. Oh. So the tide has receded and this, this normally is covered with water. So the tide has receded and this is what's left for us to enjoy now. It burns. Oh! Ow! Oh wow. It's like I'm going through a gambit. Like streams of hot water just shooting at me from different crevasses. Oh! Well folks, we hope you enjoyed the hot springs. Now, let's see what else is there to do in this place. Let's go down to the pool now. After a hot bath, it was time to rinse off and head back. We did learn that these hot springs are very popular. But you know what else is popular? My seafood diet. Okay folks, so back in town here in San Felipe, it's nighttime. We wanted to look for a place where we can rest and uh, take in a little of the good stuff. And we found a place, it's called La Vaquita. So, Come inside and join us, see what we can find in there. You know folks, the staple of this show is obviously not only enjoying activities from each place we go to and the culture and the people, but it's the food and San Felipe ain't gonna be no different. And we're here with Sergio, Sergio Leon. How you doing my friend? Good, 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 good. <laughs> he, is, he is the proprietor of this establishment, La Vaquita Restaurant, La Vaquita being the native dolphin that's of right. the Sea of Cortez, right? Well, La Vaquita Marina. La Vaquita Marina, La Vaquita right. Marina. Yeah, La Vaquita would be just a cow, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, thank you for having us here. And I see uh, you brought some appetizers That's for right. us. Now, now, what's this? Tell us about this dish. Well, uh, this one is the traditional in San Felipe, the little clams here. Okay. We got, we got, you can walk here on the beach and you can get it here. Oh, really? I'll be yeah. walking on the, on the seashore right. and, and I'll get that. That's right, okay. that's right. And it's very delicious. We, we prepare it with the butter, garlic, and, okay. and white wine. Really? That's right. If you're as hungry as I am, uh, I know this probably looks delicious to you. So, uh, as you can see, I'm kind of like a novice, uh -huh. but okay, here you go, here you go. And put it in, right? Put it in there. There you go. Nice. Ooh. <laughs> oh. Very delicious, huh? Very delicious. Uh, everybody say, more small the clam is more flavor. More flavor. The smaller the clam, 
the more flavor. Well, that, that, that was really flavorful. That was really good. Mm -hmm. What are these peppers filled with? Let's show it to the audience. That one is come with cheese. Cheese? Shrimp. Shrimp. And oyster salsa. Oyster sauce. Yeah, that's right. So this one is just straight up. It's straight, straight up. up. Straight up. <laughs> okay. Mmm, yummy, yummy. <laughs> It's yummy and messy. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're gonna bring in some kind of fish also? Yes, the fish and the mariscal. Okay. We're, we're, we're ready, folks. We're ready. Yeah. <laughs> bring it. Bring, bring it, my it friend. <laughs> <laughs> folks, your eyes are not deceiving you. What you're seeing does not do justice to this epic amalgamation of seafood. It was truly something to behold. And he wasn't showing off for our cameras. These items are in his menu. I can literally hear an echo from one side of the plate to another. Okay, folks, you're not gonna believe what this guy just brought to the table. You gotta look at this. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> you want people to die? Want people to die well, of a heart attack? <laughs> I'm, well, I'm sorry, I say for six people. Six. No, it's for 10 people. Exactly. For 10 people, yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is insane. Yeah, okay, yeah. these are vaquita rolls. The uh, vaquita marina rolls. Okay. So it's filled with coconut. Is that coconut? It's coconut. Coconut bread. Huh? Coconut. Some curvina uh, breaded it with coconut. Okay. So wait, what kind of sauce is this? There's a chipotle with a strawberry. Strawberry chipotle. A strawberry chipotle. Uh huh. Man, we make, the, we make it here. This ain't this ain't typical San Felipe. You got your own niche going on here, right? <laughs> Let's try this. Wow. Everyone loves the coconut shrimp. Everybody. And in that one, we saw that a lot of it, of, of the coconut shrimp, a lot of it, hundreds of shrimps and coconuts. Everybody love it. You might get sick of me saying how good everything is, but it is. So, <laughs> okay, <laughs> we can't stop now. What's the next stuff? What's the next one? Well, because there's too many things. Can't focus on anything. So yes, what's like, what, what haven't I tried? So this is this is Corvina fish, and this is the kind of fish you can find here. Yes. Steve Cortez. Yes. That's so right. you, you're not bringing this refrigerated. You're buying no, this. No, 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 no. We have difference. In summer, the Corvina is their a local fish in summer. This one we get from 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 Portecitos. Did you put a, a, a whole a whole octopus here? Yes. <laughs> can yes. I can I bite it? Can I like? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can yeah. I cut a piece? Yeah, that's the that's the that's the that's the idea. Eh? That's right. Okay. Now, how do you prepare this, this octopus? Uh, Tell me about it. Talk to me about it. Uh, we prepare it in the grill. With it's, a a grill it's, it's a grilled it's octopus. Garlic, with garlic and, and oh, garlic, huh? With oh, garlic. Okay. Let's, and let's butter. I love octopus. Yeah, so yeah. good. It's a, like a twin shrimp. Twin. A twin, a twin, a twin shrimp. Because we pull a bow. bow both shrimps together. This is two shrimps. Three shrimps together. Okay. And the middle, we, we use a, a bacon. Bacon, and, and, on, and what else? And, and cheese. And cheese. So it's like like a cordon bleu. A cordon bleu. But breaded. That's right, breaded. And shrimp. Man. You know, those health conscious people are going to be looking at this and say, Parker's is just going to drop dead from all these calories. But <laughs> we have to do it, folks. You know, it is a dirty job, and somebody's got to do it. <laughs> so uh, let's try it. Yes, it tastes as good as it looks. This is maybe, this is maybe one of my favorites now. No. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'm, I haven't eaten a full dish of anything. Just sampling, I'm done. But I may be able to fit in a little bit of that fish. <laughs> here you go, folks. It doesn't get any better here in San Felipe, does it? So, uh, Sergio, thank you so much for uh, no, allowing us to enjoy the full uh, gauntlet of your uh, <laughs> it's a pleasure of your offerings and uh stay well folks wash and salad mm. thank you my thank friend you. thank you very much thank you <laughs> la vaquita is becoming the place to visit in san felipe and i think it's because my friend sergio here understands food doesn't just need to be good but it needs to wow you visually our trip along the hardy river and the sea of cortez was packed to say the least we hope you join us on more adventures. 
the next time we cross south. You can find maps and information about the places you just saw, or you may order a copy of this program on DVD at CrossingSouth.com.